ETS keeps moving forward in facing future challenges by providing the best facilities for the new generation's activities. The facilities support both spiritual and physical needs. ITS also provides research facilities in the ITS Science Techno Park, including ICT and Robotics, Automotive, Maritime, and Creative Industries. Therefore, the excellent generations from ITS will emerge and make history. ITS is a space for the new generation to express themselves. ITS is a place where the new generation learns new things and finds their purpose. ITS has become a place where the new generations that carry the future will be born. ITS as a campus of science and technology, which focuses on the research and innovation, presents technology for prosperity. With a spirit of heroism, ITS brings the future before us. ITS, the University of Heroes. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, before we start commence the program, and here are the following webinar protocol. For each participant ID, please use your real name following with your origin of institution. All of participants are expected to mute the audio and only unmute the video during the event. We cordially invite you to take your own firm and comfort seat in your own room and please avoid the backlight. <laughs> Make sure that you have a good and stable internet connection. If you have an earphone or headset, we recommend you to use it so that your voice can clearly and loudly to be heard. During the Q&A discussion session, all participants, please use the chat box to deliver the questions. Thank you 
for your cooperation and consideration. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, before we start, commence the program, and here are the following webinar protocol. For each participant ID, please use your real name following with your origin of institution. All of participants are expected to mute the audio and only unmute the video during the event. We cordially invite you to take your own firm and comfort seat in your own room and please avoid the backlight. Make sure that you have a good and stable internet connection If you have an earphone or headset, we recommend you to use it so that your voice can clearly and loudly to be heard. During the Q&A discussion session, all participants, please use the chat box to deliver the questions. Thank you for your cooperation and consideration. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to guest lecture series on SDG Today, Wednesday, 10 March 2021. I am Samara from ITS Global Engagement and will be your master of ceremony this afternoon. Thank you for joining our guest lecture series on SDGs. Before we start our agenda, let me inform you of some rules for the event. To all participants, please fill your attendance at bit.ly slash attendance underscore GLS SDGs. Our committee will also send the attendance link in the Zoom chat room. And for participants who wish to get an e-certificate and stand for it, please fill the attendance 15 minutes after the session starts. Next, participants who wish to ask questions during the question and answer session, please send your question to intip.in slash Q&A GLS SDGs. The link for questions will be listed in the chat room as well. Or you can ask directly by clicking the raise hand feature. Ladies and gentlemen, this guest lecture series on SDGs is dedicated as a form of appreciation of the Institute Technology 10 November Surabaya. And for today's theme is e-inclusion e value chain framework and participatory community-centered approach to providing clean water, safe sanitation, and hygiene solution for rural communities, which will be delivered by our speakers, Associate Professor Wan Abdul Rahid Wan Mot Isa from mm -hmm. University Technology Mara and Karina Pradini Tuchuan, Master of Engineering from ITS. The lecture will be moderated by Dr. Sudarso from ITS. Before we start our agenda, allow me to deliver our schedule today as follows. First is the opening that will be followed by introduction to moderator and speakers. Next, we will proceed with the lecture session followed by the Q&A session. Next, we will proceed to the certificate awarding that will be followed by closing. Before we proceed to the next agenda, let me introduce our moderator for today. Our moderator is Dr. Sudarsor, Su, I'm sorry, Dr. Sudarsor, Master of Humanoria. He is the deputy of the Center of Study for Regional Development and Empowering Community in ITS. He has some several research, 
from 2018 and 2019, which are the development of temporal spatial model for predicting food needs as a policy towards food sufficiency, and also other research. While his research interests are the corporate social responsibility, technology and business ethics, and community development. Now, without further ado, let us proceed to the main agenda. To Dr. Sudarso, the time is yours. Thank you, uh, MC, for the warm greetings. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon to all of the participants in the guest lecture webinar series held by ITS. The Honorable Head of ITS Global Engagement Office, Dr. Astrianur Irfansa, as the Senior Manager of International Partnership, Dr. Octavianti Dwi Wahyurini, as the Senior Manager of Promotion and Mobility, Dr. Uli Pratiwi Setiawan, as the Senior Manager of on World Class University Affairs, the Honorable Chief of Regional Potential and Community Empowerment Study Center, Directorate of Research and Community Service, ITS, Dr. Sutikno. Ladies and gentlemen, students, and all participants, the guest lecture webinar series held by ITS is a series of webinars that discuss various themes in SDGs. And today's webinar is related to sustainable cities and communities, including no poverty, clean water, and sanitation. Before we start this webinar, let us all thank to Allah for the heart and blessing so that we can meet in a good condition. We are very grateful because the speaker attend the webinar. I welcome Associate Professor Dr. Wan Abdurrahim Wan Muhammad Isa from the University Technology Mara, one of the top 10 best universities in Malaysia. And I welcome Mr. Karim Fadin Tujunan from ITS. And as we know too that ITS is one of the best universities in Indonesia. Welcome Mr. Wan Abdurrahim Wan Moh Isa. How are you? Fine, thank you. Thank you for your willingness as the speaker. Welcome Mr. Karim Fadin. Uh, it's, it's great to be here. How are you, Mr. Mrs. Karim Pradin Tujunan? Uh, Alhamdulillah, fine, Mr. Darso. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, uh, okay. I am clearly. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time as speaker in this webinar. To begin yeah. the webinar, let me introduce the two speakers. Uh, MC, please uh, show the CV. Mr. Wan Abdurrahim Wan Isa, he is from the Faculty of Computer and Mathematical Sciences, University of Technology, Mara, Malaysia, located in Shah Alam, Selangor, Malaysia. His educational background is PhD in Science, University of Technology, Mara, Malaysia, and MBA in University Multimedia in Malaysia and Bachelor in IT at University Naga National Malaysia. Uh, his work experience as Associate Professor at University Technology Mara Malaysia since uh, 20 and until now, senior lecture uh, in University of Technology Mara Salam, Selangor, Malaysia. His main expertise is information technology, while the rich areas are information architecture, human computer interaction, IT management, value sensitive design 
Rural Informatic and he is professional technology from Malaysia he's been active in professional membership including as the senior member of association for computer uh, for computing machinery and IEE Society on Social Information of Technology uh, his publication are numerous in both Scopus Index Journal and Proceeding of International Seminar, I apologize, not mentioning. However, his publication can be assessed through internet. There are numerous achievements from him. He is very productive as a scientist and technologist. Mr. Wan Abdurrahim Wan Moh is a, a very great achievement. Uh, Mr. Karim Pradin Tujunan, she is, has also a great achievement. She is lecturer in uh, she is lecturer from Planology Department, Urban and Rural Planning, Faculty of Civil Engineering and Planning, ATS. She is one of the important experts at, at our study center, uh, Regional Potential and Community Empowerment Directorate of Research and Community Service, ITS. The background of Ms. Karin, a Master of Engineering, major in Urban and Regional Planning, UKM, and Bachelor in Engineering, major in Urban and Regional Planning, ITS. He has many work experience, uh, Assistant Professor, uh, Lecturer, and Senior lecturer uh, and research member of urban planning laboratory. His expertise are urban planning, participatory planning, qualitative research, uh, urban historic preservation, ethnography, and urban society. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Karin Pradin Tuchunan, expertise uh, in urban and rural planning, and she has done numerous research and experiences in collaboration with various outstanding government institutions as well as in the industrial world. Ladies and gentlemen, let's begin the session. The webinar will take place about two hours. The presentation of each speaker is about 45 minutes. After the two speakers have finished the presentation, there will be a question and answer session. Ladies and gentlemen, we will see together the lecture given by our two speakers, Mr. Associate Professor Dr. Wan Abdurrahim Wang Moisa, we deliver his lecture entitled E Inclusion Value Chain Framework. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome him. Mr. Dr. Wan Abdurrahim Wamo Isa, the time is yours. Okay, um, thank you so much uh, for the introduction. Um, I'm truly honored and grateful to be here. Um, I would like to take uh, this opportunity to give a very uh, big thank you to the organizing uh, committee um, for this particular event. It's a very uh, a wonderful event uh, being conducted uh, by this new city. So I'm, I'm um, glad to be part of the um, uh, speaker for this uh, particular event. So. Um, Without further ado, I will uh, share my slide, um, but please forgive me, I will off my video so that um, it will be a smooth presentation, okay? Okay, so this slide uh, here. Uh, okay, so Basically, this is um, the, the slide I'm going to use. So you can actually download the slide from this particular link, uh, bit.ly um, uh, sdg.rahim, or you can use uh, the QR code to download 
the particulars like in PDF. Okay. So um, as was uh, as I was being informed that we are going to to um, focus on the SDG number eleven on the sustainable cities and communities. So basically, I'm going to share uh, some of the key points of the my talk today on the SDG and also on um, the the framework that um, that I'm I'm proposing and also some of the method that I have applied uh, in my, my master class okay, to address the uh, SDG 11 on the sustainable cities and communities. So there is a project that my student have done uh, to address uh, this particular SDG. Okay. So um, thank you. I think uh, the, the moderator have uh, uh, briefed my, my, um, a little bit about myself. Okay. Um, so, um, the university that I'm coming from, I'm coming from University Technology Mara in Malaysia, Shah Alam Selangor, Malaysia. So basically, uh, we, have, we are a big university. We have uh, uh, um, branches all, all over Malaysia. Okay, Every state in Malaysia, we have branch uh, uh, of University Technology Mara. Okay. So we have students, uh, all, uh, more about 169,000 students, okay, 17, more than 17,000 staff. And we have, um, um, as, as uh, stated here, 526 program, okay. So we are a bit, very big university. Okay, so let us proceed with the lecture. When we talk about the e inclusion, okay, meaning to say we address the needs of those who are underserved, okay, those who may not have access uh, to the technology or to the facility. So, so this particular part can be streamlined to the SDG, okay. So I'm going to share a video uh, of uh, just 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 to address on the uh, SDG. So please allow me to um, uh, change the setting first. Um, So, so basically, uh, at my university, what we have done, we are trying to align our research, our teaching, um, um, the assessment that we are giving to our students to SDG. So we are a very focused university. So basically, uh, I give example in my uh, master class, okay, uh, master of science in IT class. So I'm teaching problem solving in IT. So. So I'm encouraging my students to actually align to the SDG, whether it's more on um, creating awareness or maybe um, actually uh, my students are trying to come up with a solution, proposed solution that can be picked up by the local municipal or local uh, authorities. So this is what um, we are trying to achieve. Okay, Even for the research, we are trying to align accordingly to the SDG. Okay, So... The, the definition of uh, the SDG is, um, is where we are trying to meet the needs of the present without compri compromising the ability of future generations. Okay, So we are aligning to the UN SDG. Uh, there are 17 goals altogether. Okay. 
so uh, 17 all together so i'm going to focus on stg number 11 as requested by the organizer okay so when we talk about um stg 11 okay sustainable cities and communities okay uh, we, uh, this summary uh, actually is taken from this particular source. You can have a look. Okay, um, basically, uh, is uh, the the goal is to make cities inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. So there's a lot of various efforts that you can actually contribute. Okay, uh, so you can play uh, whether it's a very major role or maybe in, in a small way uh, where you can create awareness. It's actually aligned to this SDG. Okay. So based on the problem stated here uh, uh, from the UN, okay, there are 3.5 billion people live in cities today and this number will continue to grow. Okay, So um, I think they are more concerned on those who are living uh, in the so-called suburban. Okay, uh, Those who are underserved living in the community. Okay, uh, Those who may be uh, living uh, not um, at par with those uh, majority uh, 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 who are working in the city, okay, who live in slum, who, who are homeless, right, who, who, who need to survive uh, in, a, in a very uh, challenging situation in the city. Okay, so this is one way that we need to uh, understand better on the city, on the city life. Okay, for example, in Kuala Lumpur, it's a very big uh, and uh, high tech um, uh, city. However, there's a, there, there is a social uh, problem that we are facing. Uh, so, uh, my students uh, actually uh, try to understand that better to, to this uh, particular course in the master's level. Okay. Uh, this is one example. However, other example motivation may be because of the energy consumption or pollution. That can be one, one uh, area of or problems that uh, this particular be trying to solve, okay? And many cities are also more vulnerable to climate change and natural disasters, okay? Uh, so, for example, in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, I think um, at one point of time, we experienced flash flood, okay? Um, 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 where where uh, we, we uh, some of the roads in Kuala Lumpur face uh, flash flood that, um, that the city folks need to uh, un, un, um, uh, face, okay? Whenever there is a thunderstorm or heavy rain, okay? So how do we actually try to solve the problem? Definitely, uh, it will be a very big challenge, okay? So some of the efforts, uh, uh, for example, the in to improve governments and management of the city. So the local municipal, the city council, for example, in Kuala Lumpur, uh, need to work, we need to work uh, hand in hand with them to understand better how to, we can try to solve this particular problem, right? And then those who are living in the um, in the cities as well, okay? Th those community, not those who are working, maybe those who are underserved community, right? Uh, drug addicts, okay? Uh, whether we like it or not, okay? There's a lot of, uh, uh, cases where involve criminals activities, those who, who may fall track of the drugs, right? So, so the city condition, those community need to be uh, taken into consideration by the local um, uh, authorities as well, okay? Uh, that would be one example. And then another example would be in terms of the um, uh, uh, in terms of the uh, uh, improved employment, uh, uh, safety, logistics, air quality, shared public, public spaces and condition in the cities that had greater effect on the quality of life. Okay, so my, for my class, a master's class, uh, where I'm teaching Master of Science in IT in previous semester, basically there is one course uh, on problem solving formalism for IT. So students will be given a project uh, in groups where they need to address uh, uh, SDG. Okay, need to to need to uh, actually try to understand the um, uh, alignment of the pro uh, problems or solution that they are trying to solve. Uh, uh, need to be aligned according to the 
uh, SDG. Okay, so I think the one of the example that I'm going to share later will we concentrate on how to improve the government and management of cities, where, where my students are coming up with uh, IT solutions on the management of those who are, who are homeless. Okay. So in terms of coming up with a database to assist. So they are proposing this particular prototype, which I'm going to share. Okay, so that one is for SDG number 11. Okay. So, uh, and then uh, in terms of the in inclusion value chain framework, okay, we have here, okay, if you can see the slide, okay. So what is the meaning of, um, E inclusion uh, uh, value change framework. What does it actually mean? Okay, so when we talk about uh, e inclusion, the 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 jargon or the term actually associated for us to to end the digital divide. We are trying to uh, close the gap that exists okay, between those people in the community, especially those who have IT, those who do not have IT, for example. Okay, those who are developed or are not developed, right? So that um, uh, we are addressing those people who are underserved community, okay? Those who are disadvantaged or underserved, okay? Such as the poor, okay? Uh, disabled and uh, those who are unemployed, okay? So I think this, this is actually important, especially in SDG number 11, uh, where we have the community living in the big cities. We have different... Uh, segmentation of community living there. Those who are working, those who are living comfortably, but those we, we cannot uh, put um, aside the need of those who are underserved. Okay, we need to have uh, 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 create uh, some problems in the community as well. So so uh, we need to understand this particular com uh, group of people uh, better. Okay. Okay. And uh, this is what I'm proposing uh, before this. Uh, actually, this particular framework was being used in a rural area. However, I feel that this can be uh, fine tuning, okay? Uh, looking at the uh, particular uh, group of people who are underserved, okay? So even though it is originally it was being, uh, this is what I'm proposing in my team. Uh, it has been published before. Uh, we are proposing it for rural areas, but we feel that it, is, it can also be applicable to a uh, slum area in, in big cities as well, those uh, so-called sub, sub, suburban of that particular big city, those area who may, uh, where a lot of um, uh, underserved people might be um, residing in these big cities as well, okay? So the framework actually explain about, it's, it's, a, it's a very uh, easy to understand this framework, what it, it is all about, okay? Um, where we actually look at the input, Okay, um, what is the project that you're looking uh, at? And then the output, the assets, uh, meaning to say what are the current situation? Okay, what are the opportunities and the outcome? Okay, and also the impact, okay? So the input, we need to understand better the community. Okay, what are the requirements? We need to understand them better. Uh, so basically my students, what they did was uh, they joined venture with local authorities Okay, um, uh, trying to find homeless people um, at, at night. Okay, uh, because my, my master's students is adult students who are working, so, so they are they, they, they are um, uh, adult students who are doing part time master's program in our university. So, actually, they, they get the uh, assistance from the local authority, the joint venture, and try to address the community who are, who are homeless in Kuala Lumpur. Okay. And then in terms of the project, okay, you need to understand the current situation, what are the projects okay, the local authorities are doing currently, and then what we can actually contribute okay, uh, in terms of IT solutions, okay, the IT artifacts. So, uh, so here uh, we are proposing our method as well to look at whether it's uh, good or not, the effectiveness of the uh, IT solutions. So uh, one method that can be used is usability testing. Usability is talking about whether the solution uh, that we are proposing to address the problem um, is ease of use, is usable to, for the user, is more uh, KCI field, okay? Uh, uh, more oriented on the user on coming up with the solutions. And then the assets here, we are looking at capabilities. 
and also opportunities, okay, capabilities looking at the uh, knowledge and skills of those who are we consider as the user who will benefit from the prototype they are coming at. And then in terms of the opportunity that we may uh, achieve, okay, meaning to say when we come up with a proposed solution, we look at whether there are some support from the local uh, municipal or whether it can be, um, uh, meaning to say the system can have a good storage IT infrastructure in that particular um, city as well. Okay, uh, those things need to be considered. So this particular framework is actually addressing all of this particular aspect. And then the outcome, whether the community, uh, we are trying to ensure that the community that we are addressing can actually, um, maybe before this, they are homeless. Uh, they do not have stay, so so uh, based on the system um, that uh, that can actually tag them who they are, so we can monitor them from time to time. So maybe um, before this they are homeless. After that, uh, maybe there are some um, local um, 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 so called uh, non government uh, organization who may want to assist them to so that they can pick up. Um, and, and try to live their life much better because some of them are coming from outside of the city, okay, try to uh, improve the economic situation of themselves. So sometimes to rent a room okay, in big cities is very expensive, okay, one room can cost like 400, for example, it's, it's very expensive. If you're living outside of the city, 400, you can get a, a, a small, decent home. But maybe in a city, you can just pay 400 ringgit, I think in Malaysia, uh, just for a room. So that is quite expensive. So rather than they are working, okay, uh, low salary wage, okay, try to make ends meet and try to send money at home. So they, they opt for not, not uh, renting a room and, um, being homeless in the city. So, so this is the situation that we are facing, whether we, are, we like it or not, there is this group of people that, that, um, that may create this particular problem. But this is before the COVID-19 um, situation currently, because this was done before this, okay? And then the outcome, this is the outcome that I'm saying. So hopefully we can um, create a better income so that they can, they can live better, okay? So this is what we are addressing. So I think this is, um, the the so called framework uh, as the backbone of our uh, study, and then how do we actually implement this? So again, uh, we need to I need to guide my student as well for my master class to do it properly, systematically from step to step, because basically the subject is about problem solving formalism formalism for IT. So there is a method that we are proposing a part of that particular uh, framework. Uh, it's called a soft system methodology. Uh, there is a step-by-step -step process that the student need to follow. Okay, so basically um, uh, it is uh, problem oriented as well. Okay, to solve the problem so that uh, when when I uh, share with my students, I mention to them um, there are basically four approaches to pro to solve problems. Okay, such as uh, using system centric. Okay, looking at the component of the system, okay, how do we actually try to improve better, right? Uh, so this is one example, the Tata Nano, okay, where they actually decide to put the engine front to the back so that it's more compact, okay? Or it can be based on problem-centric, okay, looking at the root of course of the analysis of the problem. For example, the problem of um, high, number of malaria cases. So rather than we try to uh, focus on cure, to cure them, might as well we prevent them because the, the, the mosquito itself actually uh, um, transmit the disease. So, so looking at the cause of problems, one of the solution might be based, based on the bad net, okay? Um, so, so you are trying to uh, make sure that you are not being um, bitten by a mosquito, okay? When, when you're sleeping at night. Uh, sometimes they are, the mosquitoes are very active in the early of the morning or during um, the, the, the evening as well, okay? So during that particular time, I swear you protect yourself with the bed mat, okay? And then um, other solution might be solution-centric, looking at uh, where the metaphor uh, of uh, trying to uh, imitate 
Okay, uh, for example, uh, Arvin I University, what they did was they tried to imitate the the method for McDonald's. If you look at McDonald's, I think their their business model is try to produce high number of quantity of um, product. Okay, uh, very systematically done. Okay, very fast. Okay, so uh, because uh, Arvin I Hospital are uh, facing uh, a lot of uh, patient coming in so they, they are trying uh, so, so when when they are employing the solution centric we need to say they are using the same concept where trying to produce high number of uh, try to solve uh, to cater for a high number of patients with a more systematically being done okay and then other option would be in terms of solver solver centric uh, this one i think um, uh, in jail rather than we 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 release the after they have served their term and then um, there are cases where they come back to the prison committing the same crime so it's occur over and over again so this option is actually uh, using the solver centric solution using dialogue okay meaning to say uh, uh, more on the spiritual part so that uh, we are healing them from inside okay so this can be healed through um, um, uh, trying them to connect with God, right? So, so this is one way on the spiritual uh, element. So I'm going to share a video. Hopefully, I have time. Maybe, uh, maybe I will skip, but I will, I will share a video. I think it's quite important to see how uh, the example that I have shared before that have been hospital. How do they actually try to produce high to cater for high number of uh, patient? Okay. It started with one man and his dream to prevent unnecessary blindness and restore eyesight to millions of his countrymen and women. When Dr. Govindapa Venkataswamy started Aravind Eye Hospital in the Indian city of Madurai in 1976, it had 11 beds. Today, it has clinics and hospitals throughout India and is the largest cataract facility in the world. Dr. Venkataswamy passed away in 2006, but his work lives on. The evidence, tens of thousands of Indians who have been given back the gift of sight. Sundaramba is from a poor village near the city of Pondicherry. The 55-year-old can't afford the cataract surgery she so desperately needs. Her neighbor, 60-year-old Abdul, is in the same boat. But Arvind is committed to providing the best eye care available, regardless of a person's ability to pay. So both will have their cataract. Today, they've come to one of the hospital diagnosis and counseling. Later, they'll be taken by bus along with 50 others to the base hospital in the city where they'll stay until their operations are completed and they've had time to recover. It's a journey both have made before. I already had the first eye done and the surgery was great. I'm glad to be getting the other one done. I'd been working as a watchman for 18 years when I started having vision problems. It affected my job. I had my left eye operated on and it's fine now, though I've been having problems with my right one. And today the doctors recommended more surgery. So basically, we, the Arvind is going to the community, so we need the, the participation of the community. The women in this ward were brought to the base hospital from villages visited by Aravind staff and are now recovering from their cataract surgery. We came to this hospital because it has a very good reputation and we are happy with the result. They are provided with food, beds, free counseling and transport to and from their communities. Uh, there are often mobile camps from Aravind in our village this time they identified 32 patients and brought us all here to the hospital 
They've treated us very well and the operation was a success. We'll be going home tomorrow. Aravind uses the fees from its paying customers to subsidize the costs of surgery for poor people who make up 70% of its patients. In order to do this cost effectively, staff must work quickly and efficiently. Ophthalmologists here can perform up to 50 cataract operations a day, a tally their Western colleagues find mind-boggling. This high volume, high quality, low cost business model has helped to make Aravind 97% self-supporting, along with its remarkable use and application of technology. Information technology is well developed in India. So we thought that whether yeah, they, we could make use of that information technology part in uh, mobilizing this uh, rural patients to the, the urban uh, surgical centers. This cramped village clinic may seem an unlikely poster child for state-of-the-art technology, but in its cavernous... So, so that is uh, just to share some of the analogy that I'm, I mentioned just now to solve a particular problem, okay? So uh, this particular hospital, they try to imitate uh, how McDonald's uh, business model are looking at in terms of uh, uh, try to cater for high number of patients, right? High quality but low cost, okay? So, so that is one way looking at that particular problem. So um, as I mentioned before, the, the methodology that my student is using is a soft system methodology. It's a good method of uh, sort of try to solve a problem. Okay, so I'm, I'm encouraging uh, you to, to look at uh, this particular method. Okay, uh, so it's, it's being developed by um, Academician University of Lancaster. Okay, to a 10 years action research, meaning to say they have uh, applied it and they see the results. Okay, so uh, it's, a, it's a very good um, uh, practical way of uh, where you can apply system thinking. Okay. So the method suggests that system capable of processing the size of the red field because the participants have different views. So the keyword here, again, okay, uh, so we cannot uh, be biased, okay, whatever that we are thinking might be different from what the user are looking at, okay. So because uh, basically we have different values, different beliefs, different standards that we are looking at, we have different upbringing, so, so we cannot assume that everyone thinks and behaves like, like uh like we are currently doing okay we, we cannot anticipate that so we need to to cater for differences that we may have in different opinion different belief okay so there are several stage okay we are which i'm going to share so my students have applied accordingly okay so uh, first and the situation causes the problematic express the problem situation formulate rule definition with conceptual uh, models and then compare with your world. So this is very important. Compare with the models, whatever that you have uh, conceptualized, okay? Uh, let's say uh, I ask my students, what do they think about uh, homeless student, uh, homeless people in Kuala Lumpur? So whatever that they think they're trying try, try to conceptualize based on their meetings, right? But looking at real world situation, it might be different. So that's why they have joint venture with the local authorities during one of the raids uh, in the Kuala Lumpur area where it's being conducted at night, they see it for themselves, okay? And they, they interact and they get um, uh, information uh, from the, the, the so-called targeted community, those who are homeless, vagrant, vagrant users, okay? And then they are trying to take action on to, to improve the problem situation, okay? So, so this is where, um, okay, um, again, uh, as what I mentioned, to address the SDG number 11, sustainable cities and communities, the efforts that, that is being reflected uh, in my class is more on to improve the government and management of the cities, the city, the, the particular targeted, okay, in those who are in slums or those communities who are so this is one way on how to address the sustainable cities and communities, okay? To make it more, to make the city more inclusive, okay? We, we do not want to leave out any communities who are living there, even though they are homeless, they do not have home, but, may, but, but some of them are working, 
Okay, so so but they they can't afford to pay the rooms or spend their money or their salary on uh, accommodation. Okay, so again, this is what I am sharing. Okay, my part time students. Okay, who are working doing uh, uh, post graduate program. One of the class is problem solving for middle. It's good as they are being involved with the committee. Okay, so this is uh, the, the uh, this is uh, two of my students here. Okay, um, uh, they are they are working full time, but but first thing they study part time. So I asked them to. Uh, they actually, uh, I did not ask them, but they decided to join with the local authorities during during one of the raid at, at night. So they engage with those who are homeless, but with supervision and assistance from the local authorities as well. Okay, so it's a good effort. I'm learning as well from my students. Okay, uh, when because some of them, uh, uh, they 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 some of them are working, uh, in doing. In the time they are working, but they do not have money to, they can't afford to waste their money uh, by renting a room or uh, waste their money for transportation. So it's quite sad. Uh, this is a real, real case in, in one of the uh, slum area in uh, Kuala Lumpur. Okay. So the student is addressing homeless people okay, in cities. Okay. We, are, we, are, we are looking at urban vagrant, okay. meaning to say those who are homeless. Okay. Uh, those are poor people, okay. The community of target in the real big cities, okay. So they participate, uh, this on this particular two dates, okay. Uh, in 18 October 2018 and 24 October, okay. Uh, so what do vagrant means, okay? Those who are, I may have, uh, does, does not have, uh, can be considered those who are poor, okay. Uh, and they do not have uh, uh, ability to access uh, some basic necessities such as accommodation. Okay, so there's a lot of different type of vagrant. Okay, those who are maybe uh, chronic, right, uh, um, or other part of the type of uh, vagrant people who do, does not have uh, money to begin with, right? Those who may be considered illegal immigrants. Those who may be uh, considered as um, the the situational vagrant, they 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 suddenly lost their job, right? Uh, so so they do not um, have money to 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 pick up or to sustain their lifestyle. So they they need to move out from their rental home, right? So there's a lot of type of vagrants uh, as stated in the literature review. Okay, so my students apply this accordingly. Okay, uh, enter the situation considered problematic, which is the one that I'm sharing. Okay, those who are living in pavement streets, right? Uh, so the issue is homeless issue in Kuala Lumpur. Okay, and then uh, they once they understand, they are trying to come up with a rich picture so that they understand the problem better. Okay, and then these are some of the uh, steps in the source system methodology. Okay, stage three, okay, where they use this um, uh, cat um, uh, so called acronym to identify who are the actors involved, right? Uh, in terms of transformation, what are the beliefs, right? What, who are the owner, okay, and the environment. So, so in Kuala Lumpur, we have uh, this center called Pusat Transit Lanangan Negara. So basically, um, this transit, uh, we provide um, uh, some rooms for them to stay, okay, first come, first basis. Okay, and then stage three formulate root definition. Okay, or oh, I'm running out of time. Okay, another five minutes. Okay, uh, so this root definition is uh, basically uh, where you are trying to um, formalize the problem, right? Uh, in terms of the process that you are attacking. Okay, so so how do you actually understand the problem so that we can actually transform in form of the IT solution? Okay. So this is the conceptual model based on the literature review. This is what the, my students have to come up with in terms of the uh, conceptual model, okay? In terms of uh, the current operation, inspection, okay? How do you actually tackle uh, these homeless people, okay? Because they do not have the authorization to sleep uh, in streets. So, so some of the rates uh, were involved those officers, 
uh, where where they need to be detained in certain location. Okay, and then stage four. Okay, uh, in terms of uh, looking at uh, the model itself, whether it's um, uh, efficient or not. Okay, so we need to look at whether the existing program actually is um, uh, beneficial for the evacuates or not. Okay. So the, and this is where uh, in stage five, where they compare the construction model with previous situation. So this is from the rate that they have um, um, involved in 18 of October, as well as in 24th of the October, okay? So they understand better in terms of the behavior operation, uh, how do the local authorities tackle these issues, okay? Uh, and then what are the acts? Um, of the government policy involved, okay, for this particular rate to be conducted, okay, how do they, they are being inspected, okay, being treated properly according to the standards being defined, okay, and then surprisingly, when the rate occurs, there's uh, children involved, meaning to say there are children who are part living in streets, so so sad, those who may be disabled, senior citizens who can't actually um, tend, for, tend for themselves, so it's quite sad to see that. So, uh, so this is an important issue to be tackled in big cities, okay? Um, and then um, in terms of define possible changes with possible, okay, how do you actually solve the problem? And they have actually think of one way is important for identification because to give sources, we need to assist those who are really homeless, okay? I mean to say, um, look, uh, the database that the students are proposing will compare with criminal records and drug records, okay? So those who may want to pick up their life. So, so this is what they are proposing, the prototype to assist the local municipal, okay? In terms of managing uh, this particular background or homeless people because they can't detain them. So maybe next week they will still be homeless. So they need to try, okay? So as a conclusion for this particular project, uh, they feel that uh, urban migration issues is very complicated cases. Okay, um, so so we need to address them because some of the migrants uh, do have some mental issues as well. Okay, not just uh, 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 this particular uh, economy, meaning to say they do not have money to rent, but there's a lot of um, different um, cases involved. Okay. So this minority need to be tackled so that uh, they are living um, harmony with the uh, city folk as well, okay? And then um, I think the database will assist as well. The NGO will be able to track uh, after the fund being given, the support being given, can they sustain, can they start to um, uh, stand on their feet, okay? So this is what, um, so last video, I think before I end my, my presentation, just For the International Day of Happiness, the UN and UNICEF have joined forces with the Smurfs. Follow me! Nothing makes a Smurf happier than seeing people help each other and protect our planet. Wow, 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 wow! Yeah. The United Nations has a plan to accomplish this, the Sustainable Development Goals. From getting all children into schools, to keeping our land and oceans clean, whoa, and making sure everyone is healthy and has enough nutritious food to eat. Whatever you do, don't eat all your rations. I just ate all my rations! Our world is a big place, but each and every one of us can make a difference. Even a small Smurf can help achieve big goals. What would you do to help? Um... Get ideas at smallsmurfsbiggoals.com. It takes a village, so join the Smurfs to help our world. We're Team Smurf, and we stick together. Change is in your hands. Nailed it! Okay, so, so the video is actually to conclude my presentation today. After we have completed our project, definitely I, I, I need to ask my students to reflect back whether do they actually, the solution, do they actually uh, address uh, the e inclusion part, whether they address the, uh, uh, the SDG goals on um, uh, number 17. So they need to reflect back. Reflection is very important after completing a particular project. Um, uh, it's, it's very important for them to actually try to 
uh, make sure that um, um, the, the problem is being addressed accordingly, right? Um, so the alignment must be there, definitely, okay? Uh, the beginning, in the middle and the end need to be aligned accordingly, so they need to double check, okay? So uh, with that, I think I can uh, stop sharing. Um, I end my presentation today. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Um, I, I welcome for any question after the session. Okay, thank you. So I pass it back to the moderator, Prof. Pak Darso, I think you still mute your uh, microphone. Thank you, Mr. Dr. Wan Abdurrahim Wan Muhammad Isa for your presentation, uh, which is very clear, complete, and systematic. Uh, the next speaker, um, Mrs. Karin Pradin Tujunan, will give the lecture entitled Partnership in Healthy Communities as part as part of ending poverty. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome her. Mr. Karin Pradin Tujunan, the time is yours. Okay, thank you, Pak Darso. Uh, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Karina Pradin Tujunan, as mentioned. So I'm here as a representation of the Center of Study of Regional Development and Community Empowerment in ITS, Surabaya. So this is basically actually one of our project because you know when we are talking about SDGs, when we are talking about cities, we cannot just talking about one institution, but we have to talk about the partnership. And for this case, we are talking about the healthy community. So this is actually uh, between the cooperation between the Rotary Australia and Indonesia, and also Gerse uh, Regency, and also the ITS and engineer with a border in Australia. So this is actually the initiative of uh, Rotary Australia, but they contact us to help to assess uh, what kind of program that Gersia uh, Agency need. And then the main topic is about the participatory community center approach to provide clean water, safe sanitation, and hygiene solution for the communities. Okay. So when we are talking about Goal 11, sustainable cities and communities, this is uh, the real thing. So almost 60% people of the world is living in the city. And in the future, maybe like 80% of the world is uh, will going to live in the city. And in Indonesia, 134 million people live in the city in 2014. And I don't know, but now maybe like almost 60% now. And then, uh, however, 828 million people still live in slums and the number keep rising. Even Indonesia have kind of an achievement uh, about 1.2% between 2000 and 2009 and 2014, we have slightly decreased number. But however, in 2014, we also remember about a lot of disaster that happened in Indonesia. And when we are talking about sustainable cities and community, we are talking about also the target. So, uh, what we bring here is about safe and affordable housing and basic service, and then the inclusive urbanization and participatory integrated planning, and then resilient to disaster because you know, like um, uh, flood and also uh, retention of the water is also a disaster in Indonesia. And then also how we build technical support to support sustainable and resilient building. So when we are talking about all of these targets, we are talking about the resilient community. That's why why PDPM or <clears throat> ITS is using the participatory uh, approach. And this is Indonesia overall performance about the indicator number, all indicator actually. But if we are talking about indicator number 11, we can see that this is a, a kind of a actually. And we can see that number two and number 15 is still low and also the number nine and number 10. So overall about the index score is about 64.2 and then the regional effort score is 65.7. So if we talk about, I'm sorry, if we, we, talk, we talk about the index, maybe we are not so bad, but we are in the average. 
And what we are doing in here is we use the participatory planning as our methodology. If you don't know about participatory planning, participatory planning means uh, we do the bottom up planning. So if usually we have planning, the planning is from the municipal, from the government. Like for example, government is uh, addressing some issue and then after that they make the tile plan about it, that's what we call top down planning. Uh, on, the other, on the other side, when we're talking about the participatory planning, we as a community, we can have a voice about what we are going to do. Uh, I also thought about the previous lecture about Prof. Juan Abdul Rahim. He mentioned that uh, if something is top down and not aligned with the value of the community, it will fail. It is actually fail. That's why the method, actually the work method uh, is participatory planning. And we aim about uh, providing the basic infrastructure and then housing facilities and then sustainable uh, environment. And we are assessing about the risk, uh, about the water sanitation and hygiene, and also the action and also the priority. And we talk about the impact in Surawiti. Surawiti is actually one area in uh, Gerse. Gerse is actually small city. so. If you imagine that all the city have a good infrastructure at Surabaya, no, and some of the city will look like uh, Surabaya. And then what we are, what we were doing in the village first is we are, uh, we were doing some community engagement. Community engagement mean we we don't not we we approach the community with the. Uh, some method we didn't directly ask them like a lot of questions, but we just getting know each other with them first, and then like uh, having dinner with them, and then uh, we talking about a lot a lot of things with them first to get to know the community first, so the community is become familiar with us, and we targeting about the diverse group and then diverse social economic status. Diverse group mean. Uh, there is a woman that we approach, and then child, and then also male, and then about the social economic status. We also approach the most vulnerable uh, social economic status, and also the just. And we under we try to learn about what they like and what could be improved by them. And if they have some improvement or something improved about the three topic about their sanitation and hygiene, uh, we we ask the question, why hasn't it been improved? And then we also uh, did some few like works uh, about the water sanitation and hygiene. Uh, we basically, what the fire work is uh, working with them, uh, with the community and ask them to mention about what they, what they have in mind about the perception about the water and the sanitation and then mapping together with them. And so basically the, the village work and also system mapping this is we are doing uh, in the parallel uh, session. And then uh, we are uh, we were discussion about uh, what option to improve and then how we can uh, act in the future and then the community review it. So this is the condition of the Surawiti, uh, small city in the Gersi area, as you can see. Uh, this is their main uh, water resource from the well, and also they're doing some rainwater harvesting, but in this uh, kind of storage. So it is basically not really hygiene, or maybe like a not standard as a uh, maybe in everything. I mean, in the world and also in Indonesia, but this is happening because what Surawati is uh, actually have a high elevation, so it's kind of hard to you know have some piping to uh, from the city of the Gerse to the Surawiti. So this is what, uh, what they did. Uh, but, they are, uh, but they are using water, water uh, buying some water for drinking, but not using this as drinking, but for uh, cleaning the clothes and also like um, doing some daily stuff, they, they use this water. And this is the community that we involve and part of them are our researcher from the engineer with border, as you can see. And this is how we can method, uh, hey, this is our method about the village uh, mapping. So basically community is mapping their own uh, 
problem. And as you can see also, they have some uh, storage in here and the storage is uh, con uh, connecting with the pipe, the, but the pipe is not standard. This is uh, vulnerable to leak and also like um, when having some fluid or also some uh, issue in the uh, distribution. And this is the sample of the water that we collected to test about the water. And so uh, we were uh, mapping about the risk. The first is about the open wells. And then they, they do have some rainwater collection and they do have some drinking water station. Um, if in Indonesia, like a station for isi ulang air, so they don't use our, but uh, more isi ulang. And then, but this is, has a risk about the resulting in water quality risk uh, from E. coli from animal and then dust. And then the water is also stagnant, so it could uh, pollute the water. And then the calcium and salt is also high. And for the action, we are uh, agreeing with the community about uh, to educate them about the cover the wells and then use first plus system practice on rainwater. Uh, I will uh, tell you later about this uh, system and then operation and maintenance checklist and training. And this is uh, the partnership that we are trying to build. Like for example, this is local is uh, the society itself and operation and maintenance checklist and training will be provided by uh, engineer without borders and also Rotary. And then for the risk uh, and opportunity about the network storage and distribution, uh, the risk is about leaks and then lying pipes in gray water canal. So this is the potential for uh, lying pipes in gray water canal because they don't have one. And then they need also backflow prevention and they're, they're also risk about alcohol to due to the sunlight. And the action that we suggest is repair leaks and review distribution network. This is we are suggesting by local plumber and then the design a network and construction to have the dedicated pipe trench. This is also local plumber and local governments and this is need a kind of a lot of money. And also uh, operation and maintenance checklist and training this by uh, engineer with a border and rotary. And also this is education on flow prevention and covering cleaning and research for and tank by local plumber and also local government. And for the risk also, because they have a storage, but the, the storage is open. So this is uh, the risk for them because uh, the water can be polluted with anything. And then there are also risk for cross-contamination and also dirty container. So we are trying to suggest how to cover the container and then educate on hygiene practice with water storage and also clean container regularly because they don't they don't clean the container actually. They use it about like a two years and then three years and after that they just uh, use it. And this is uh, the partnership with the local result and then ITS Rotary and then local. And about the water security, uh, because they are still reliant on one water source. So we suggest that we need to have some hydrogeological survey or study to make sure that uh, maybe they have another uh, water source instead of one water source. And then the cost of water is an affordable for them. For, uh, this is almost 80% people uh, in the Sarawati cannot afford the water unless they have only the water from uh, some community center and also from the rainwater harvesting. That's why we are uh, suggesting about the hydraulic analysis and also mapping the water. And also uh, the partnership is about the local government, consultant and ITS and also other. And this is what we are talking about. Uh, we recommend uh, them to have a aquifer for storage and recovery. Uh, we will try to build some well that injected the wetland and basin. And also for some houses that maybe uh, have opportunity to have this kind of system, this is going to be connected with their open well. So basically from the roof and then come to the pipe and then from the pipe come to the well. This is the ideal one. And before that, we have one closed system that I told you about. This is to filter about the water because the water from the roof is actually uh, not all clean. So this is 
need uh, the filters be, uh, before coming to the wells. And the well uh, is also like a drain when in the dry season. So they don't, they don't have any practically any water for doing anything except for drinking, they can buy it. But other than that, they can afford it. So what the impact about the water is we are talking about the sanitation. So this is, as you can see, uh, this is our the, uh, situation, the sanitation in the Surawiti area. Uh, you can see that uh, the sanitation is not well used. Maybe like some, some, uh, some people use it well, but the other like, yeah, they have a sanitation, but they don't use it anyway. Yeah. So often, open defecation is often happen in this area. And as you can see, the floor is also a uh, standard of the PPS in Indonesia is a uh, for lower income community. And this is our team in sanitation is uh, explaining about Cido. <laughs> Cido, maybe many Indonesian, many non-Indonesian don't know about the Cido, but um, uh, the Australian uh, Rotary researcher was surprised to use a Cido. And then, <laughs> Uh, so the risk that uh, we are talking in here is about uh, many people are open defecating because they cannot afford to buy or build their own toilet. So this is uh, I asked the team that they make they they have the number is almost seventy percent of the people cannot afford to buy or build their own to uh, toilet, especially in the high area in the hilly area, and then when come to the restricted water supply during the dry season. Uh, they often uh, refer things back to open defecation. So they, they do have toilet, but uh, when to, when dry season, they don't have a water to wash the uh, the uh, their urine and also their uh, gray water and black water. So that become an issue. So they prefer to back to the open defecation. So uh, as you can see that uh, the previous slide is showing that many uh, toilet is uh, not being used properly. And then even though they told us that there are a clear septic tank, uh, but we are actually like, um, don't know whether it is reality septic tank or not because it is fully enclosed. And, but the information suggested there is no concrete base or seal on some tank. So, and then some system are of the platforms. And then this race uh, can lead to leakage and potential, potential environmental and groundwater contamination with leads to community health issue. And then also uh, uncontained effluent pipes from the toilet. So this uh, potentially contaminating the environment and people living in the area and possibly in the downhill. So Surawati is uphill and then uh, the downhill can be also affected by the community behavior. And this is how we are playing with them. Actually, this is our, one of our method to uh, give some people uh, access to their opinion. You know, the, the color is mean nothing, but the much number of the uh, circle, it means they prefer that one. And the first thing I think they want uh, accessibility for all. So this is the basically in English is accessibility for all and in Indonesia bisa digunakan semua orang. And then also uh, their second preference is uh, it is suitable with a small space because their house is very pretty small space, uh, maybe like maybe 30 to 36 uh, meters square. And then they also expected that the price will be affordable. And then the local is, uh, the material is local because if it is not local, then it will hard for them to build it. And then they expect to be effective and then easy maintenance and also less water because they realized that, however, less water is uh, almost impossible in sanitation. And this is, we are mapping together uh, if we have some program where we are going to put it. So this is a public septic tank. This is for the example, how we do some uh, program with them. And then this is uh, the recommendation action, yeah, like, Conduct socialization, triggering, and awareness raising regarding open defecation because not everyone in the community is uh, aware that open defecation is actually dangerous. And this is uh, we are talking about the 
stakeholder like PAMDES, Puskesmas, Puskesmas is health center and village chief. And then uh, we are talking about the behavioral change in here also, motivate homeowner without a toilet to buy or build toilet. This is uh, the job of everyone, I mean everyone is including ITS and also the local government. And then both construction septic tank to fall to standard because we found that the construction of septic tank is not standard. And then also build a warning sign for the public or visitor about rule for open defecation. Then we are started about one month and it will going to do, uh, it will be executed by the Padres and also uh, Subtilas Chief. And then we also develop guidelines for technology and behavior change because when we are talking about sanitation, we cannot only talk about the tools, but we talk about the behavior change. And for example, we we endorse about the satopan and ecosan. I will uh, explain about it later. And then this is the responsibility of the PTT and also the community. And then recommended to conduct the tile inspection of three, three to four septic tank. Yeah. And ideally order one to empty, clean, and also uh, determine if there is contact land base and also build construction septic tank to fall to standard in this one year. But this is uh, still in the negotiable state. And this is what I told you about the potential technological recommendation. Uh, this is UDTP people on with the UDTP plan. This is a uh, low to change and also like um, uh, pull the the black water into something uh, somewhere else. And this is Satopan, this is very low water crossing is about like a 200 milliliter water is maybe like a one glass of aqua, you can uh, flush your uh, black water and gray water. And we also recommend that about the biodigester, this is for Safe sanitation and then also can be for energy production and then fertilizer production and also reduction in smoke related health issue and uh, about the firewood. And then for general finding for hygiene, uh, people often engage and then the variety of socioeconomic status is quite wide, but they have minimal understanding between status on impact of income variation but they have a lack of equity in access to water, sanitation, and hygiene. But since Rawiti is uh, famous as one of the wali or maybe like um, sacred space in uh, Gersi area, so we call it Sunan Kalijogo, one of our uh, Islamic preacher at the early, early era that about it and they thought about the one uh, that uh, there and connected with the sacred space and they want to create the tourist area. And actually the, for the hygiene, uh, they literally like have a good health reports and also the North also has access to comprehensive flood from government. But too bad there is no ambulance in there for emergency and postpass mass or maybe health center, the nearest health center is about five, five kilometers away. But uh, there is a small uh, or maybe village health center that open till 12 p.m. and uh, the community is uh, the community itself is suggesting that uh, maybe they can have staffing for 24 hours. And then this is for the risk of uh, hygiene about the real disease because of open defecation and then also lack of access to fish and water and limited education and lack of knowledge and also poor quality of transitional water and also all. And we expect that uh, someday the community has access to and use safe sanitation and also sufficient so clean water and adequate education about cause of the area and resulting communication such as stunting. So stunting is practically happen in the Sulawesi area. And community has adequate education about treatment and risk of using transitional water and risk is sufficiently prior to use. So we suggest uh, that uh, there is uh, education for six to 12 months. We assess the gap first and then develop curriculum within the agency and sanitarians. And then we train the key hygiene focal points and uh, we try to evaluate and monitor the progress. And then we also suggest behavior change, general hygiene. This is uh, maybe like 12 to 
18 months. Uh, this is called the signing hygiene uh, campaigns by sanitarians and also implement multifaceted approach and evaluate assess and process. And we also uh, have some recommendation to BFR change. So this is a pond. Uh, they said that the pond is never dry, but actually the quality, the water of the pond is very poor. So if they don't have water, they often hear, but as you can see, the quality of the water is uh, very poor. And then uh, we suggest that a prolonged study of pond used by community member focusing on all sexes, social economic classes, and also all, and also explore and map option using uh, HAG, and then also creating plan and trialing option by community and address. And then also because they are smoking, and the smoking is also begin as young as 11, so this is a trouble. And also they have a daily use of wood fire cooking to boil water inside the house. So practically when they are cooking, uh, uh, smoke is everywhere. And even their son is uh, already smoking at 11. So this is a very potential harm for all the environment and for all the people. And then also solid was burning and also all people reported cause of death attributed to lung condition and report of young people with a lot of asthma. That's what happened. And we expect that uh, we can reduce incident of smoking, yeah, community white and male focus because uh, mostly male are the, doing the smoking and then minimize smoke inhalation risk from wood fire and also reduce solid, wa solid waste related to smoke inhalation. And this is what we are uh, going to do. Like um, we have some cigarette smoke reduction from campaigns that including ITS, health agency and sanitarian uh, to suggest to include gradual change in elementary smoking in home, then in front of children, then the public building. And then also implement it in the community and what approach and evaluate and assess the success. And then we also suggest to reduce wood fire related smoke inhalation what the ideal solution to reduce wood fire smoke inhalation, and then plan and implement option to reduce smoke inhalation that uh, held by ITS, health agency, and sanitarian. And this is for the solid management, as you can see, no collection of rubbish. This is actually happened in the city. And the allocated disposal site for rubbish is not universally used, and only three meters per and uh, nine meters per area, and it is too small. And then the rubbish is unsorted and disposed by individual. And each household is responsible for their own uh, solid water disposal. And then household on top of field dispose of rubbish and crater, which will flow down during the rains, public hatcheries. And what we expect, the uh, community has access to the sign of safe disposal site and also affordable. And also, uh, community has access uh, inform uh, information about the hygiene. And community is motivated for knowledge to practice. And this is what we expected in the management uh, plan for the uh, solid waste. Yeah. So this is the idea or screen option regarding solid waste in community. And then we need research management plan and financing because we are talking about the uh, solid waste, which need a lot of uh, maybe like um, money and then education and BCC campaign about uh, solid water management and then implement solid waste plan about the community. And then this is a uh, collaboration yeah, between the uh, community, community leader, ETS, and then health agency and environmental agency in mapping their problem and also identifying the risk and also uh, conducting the uh, program. So all the program that uh, we are talking about in here is actually by the community participation uh, and also the partnership that we, we held in here in focus group discussion. And this is uh, what we want as an impact. So uh, as an uh, impact, we expect that uh, there is a reduction in non-revenue water and also improvement in water safety and also improve sustainable water resource uh, that can be used as a social and environment and economic outcome. And then for the sanitation is, uh, uh, we hope that there is 
uh, awareness and uh, rising and awareness and access to affordable appropriate low water sanitation option like motivate community to invest or access financing to purchase and bottle toilet and also reduce open defecation and then reduce risk of facial contamination and related health issues. And then the hygiene is we expect that there is a declining case in chronic diarrheal disease and also declining in respiratory illness and also uh, declining in solid waste produce and ill health effect by reducing quantitative products and also uh, rising in access to hygiene and health education. So uh, the next step is uh, we hope with our program, uh, there is no people that actually in Surawati is uh, having little food or unclean water or even no school. And then with uh, providing the water and also the basic sanitation, we hope that the disease and also infection uh, could also uh, declining. So the productivity could be rise and then the income could be, could be rise because uh, if the income uh, could not be rise and the productivity could not, could not be rise, uh, people will have a low self-esteem and no personal control. This is, we expect that, that uh, providing this one will affect it in the uh, household, overall household in the poverty dimension. This is also that we expect that in the, if we can solve the clean water and sanitation problem, maybe they will have a better safe and working condition and then also head care and then nutrition and so there can uh, there will be better education for them and then better skill and training and better employment opportunity. Okay, that's the last from me. Uh, I think it's enough. Thank you for your time. Uh, put it back on moderator. Thank you, Mrs. Karen Pradeep Pichunan for your presentation. It is in depth and well presented. Uh, to all participants. Now we open the session for question and answer uh, for about uh, 30 minutes. Who want to ask question can directly state to the speaker by raising your hand or the type the question in a link Q and I. If participant want to ask a question Please raise your hand. Uh, Bapak Sudarso, Dr. Sudarso, it seems uh, one participant raised uh, his hand. It's uh, Lutfi. Lutfi. Okay. Uh, please, uh, Lutfi, please mention your name and institution and tell to whom your question address. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you for the time. Uh, my name is Ahmad Lutfayagi. Uh, I'm from ITS, currently undergraduate at Chemical Engineering. Uh, I'm. Uh, I want to ask question to Miss Karina. I'm a very very interested in the water sanitation problem in Indonesia, especially. Uh, there's some like it seems like a simple problem, but in reality, water sanitation is very very hard. Like so many things need to be tackled until uh, we can solve the photo sanitation. Like for example, I find a case in uh, Kaliasa River. Uh, I think it's in uh, middle Java. Yes, uh, so in there, uh, there's like the community like have two problems. Uh, the, what, the first is the river, they use uh, to drinking, they use the well in their home. But uh, sadly, the well is contaminated by the pollutant in the river. So, like as close as the, the Kaliasa River, the well in their home is contaminated. Like there are two problem here. Uh, like if we want to clean the well, well the river will contaminate them again. If we want to clean the river, well it's very very hard thing to do because cleaning the river is a very high effort. Uh, uh, what do you think of this condition? Thank you. Thank yeah. You. Okay, thank you, uh, Lutfi, for your question. To Mrs. Karen, would you like to answer this question, please? Yeah. Thank you, Pak Darso. Uh, yeah, Lutfi, I think it happening. It uh, the case in the central of Java. Yes, correct. Oh, yeah, central of Java. Okay, 
maybe like uh, because we are in the uh, shore area, uh, maybe we are easier to get uh, water even though it is not, uh, you know, not clean. But for the case that uh, uh, using well and the well already contaminated with the river and also the uh, the contaminator, other contaminator, I think we can use rainwater as a solution, even though rainwater is now still like um, maybe have a limited uh, serving time, maybe like only a couple months because uh, low of the storage of the uh, storage water of the rainwater. So basically, if uh, you want to solve the problem, maybe uh, we cannot use the well for drinking. We can have uh, some HIPAM. HIPAM is actually community water. Actually, you can drop it off from uh, from private private sector, also from the government. You can actually ask the government to drop the water from the HIPAM or community, and that's for the safe water. And then uh, for the other usage, uh, instead of uh, drinking, I think we can still use some rainwater, but the rainwater is uh, need to be planned for long term. So the storage need very big, and also maybe like. Uh, I don't know about how the idea to cleaning the well, but actually the well can be used, but uh, we don't find, I mean, like the ITS not, uh, still don't know how to, you know, cleaning the well. Uh, actually, there is a water purification, but maybe in chemical might be like a, a more familiar than that, comparing to me in the urban energy environment. Uh, yeah, so the water is like uh, highly polluted. There's a lot of uh, chlorine, like in the river itself, there's like uh, 15,000 of chlorine. Uh, yes, chlorine. Oh. It's, it's so bad. But sadly, from the river itself, it's uh, slowly precipitated to the well of the uh, community community around there. So uh, it's affecting them. Though it's not as, as high, it's only around 600 to 700. Uh, though the main problem of the well is like the bacteria in there, like uh, uh, coliform mm -hmm. bacteria is around fifth, uh, one point five hundred, oh, oh, fifteen hundred. That's high, yes, and so little. It's actually little about the bacteria that much on it. Yes, some it's, people is yeah. yeah. still use it. It's it's so sad. I, I, uh, I mean, in I ever try to uh, propose a, pro a solution, but still. Uh, I think very, very hard to tackle. So yes, I maybe try to get some insight from you. Uh, you're more, uh, more yeah. experienced in the sector than I am. Okay. Okay, I think we can discuss much because Rotary Australia is, uh, uh, not only Rotary Australia, but Rotary in Indonesia is also uh, interested with water topic. Yeah, almost a global international Rotary is interested in water topic. I think we, we can propose the you know, the solution, because you cannot solve by itself, even the ITS cannot solve, cannot help by ourselves. So it, it have to be comprehensive, it have to be assessed. And uh, we also need to see uh, how the community behave and the resiliency of the community about the water. Because usually they also have some adaptation uh, behavior uh, to uh, overcoming their problem. And then we need to actually like uh, endorse and kind of modify it. And uh, after that, we can talk about the infrastructure because infrastructure is actually cost a lot. That's why we approach it with the participatory community. So it can solve kind of a little bit of their problem. Yeah, that's a very good question, Mr. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, thank you, Ms. Karin, for answering the question. The next question please you raise hand uh, I don't see who raise hand Rati Rati Bapak Rati oh Rati ok ok yes ok thank you for the opportunity uh, my name is Rati from Master Student Electrical Engineering ITS. Uh, I want to ask to Ms. Karin. Uh, okay, Ms. Karin, uh, I have a startup about uh, water management system. Uh, and then I want to ask about, uh, it is possible, uh, is it possible or not to 
uh, implement technology about uh, water technology in uh, village society. I think uh, uh, what the way or what uh, the step that you, you did to educate uh, the village society uh, about uh, the water technology, is it possible or not uh, to implement that technology in terms of a village society that uh, didn't know or a little bit less know about the tax safety itself? Thank you. Sorry, I cannot uh, start my video. It's okay. Thank you, okay. Yeah, thank you, Ati, for your question. This means is Karen to answer. Okay. Uh, when we are talking about the technology, we have to uh, understand about the people first. So basically assessing uh, how they behave and then how they react to the certain uh, technology it is very important. So if you have any technology, new technology in the uh, for the citizen, especially live in the rural area, we have to make some uh, observation first about their behavior. And then after that, uh, we introduce our technology. Yeah, For example, like the Sato Pan that I told you about, we already uh, preview it to them, and then they think that it is uh, acceptable and they can use it because it is actually very easy. And we have some, maybe like a trial month, maybe one or two months, and then we can assess uh, how the impact. And after that, we can say that it is appropriate technology or not. Because we are talking about maybe like uh, not only the uh, how they use technology, but also how they value technology like that. For example, like, you know, uh, when people might be like rejecting some technology because they believe, because they think like maybe uh, I remember because this is the, uh, this project is not only in the Surawiti, it's actually also in Jombang. Uh, they are very strictly uh, ask, uh, ask our team to provide uh, water that especially for wudu. Wudu is uh, ablution in Islam because wudu is also uh, first almost uh, like first water. You know, like uh, we cannot use second water as a wudu. So. Uh, Wudu is actually taking almost 30% uh, of their uh, water usage uh, in the Marmoyo, Jombang. And after that, our team is suggesting how about the Wudu water is not coming directly to the floor, but also uh, coming uh, to, to another storage. And the another storage is using for the other purpose, like for example, uh, giving the uh, their cattle and also uh, some water and also maybe like washing motorcycle and something like that and they agree about that so it's actually technology is not always talking about the very high technology because we are talking about uh, various people and uh, they don't even you know like literate in, in internet uh, internet thing but this is also kind of technology a very simple technology but they can use it and this is actually reduce the water you said about like uh, maybe like 20 percent and I actually it's good so if you have any technology and it is like an, in a rural society, I think it is appropriate to take time to get their perception about it, whether it is uh, suitable with their value or not, and then ask their opinion and also have some trial time, like maybe a month or two months and evaluating the operation and maintenance. And if they can do that, and then uh, we can provide for the long term. Okay, thank you, Ms. Karin. Uh, one, more, uh, one more question. Uh, uh, I'm curious still about the wood, uh, wood water itself. Uh, how about the maintenance uh, for wood water itself? Is it uh, maintenance by the society or the other community? Yeah, it is uh, actually because uh, in the rural area of Marmoyo, they have a uh, uh, HIPAM, is the community water service. So, uh, mm -hmm. They are maintenance by the community water service, but the community water service is not come to household. So people, uh, the HIPAM is putting only in some spot and then household come and taking the water. And the water is using by a lot of purpose, but they always like uh, make uh, some percentage for the wood itself. Thank you, Mrs. Karin, for answering my question. Thank you for the question. Okay, thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, direct question are closed. I think uh, now I will read uh, the question in a link Q and A. Uh, there are some question. 
uh, the first <coughs> from Imam Taufik Daulai uh, from ITS. He asked, I think, for address for Mr. Awan Abdurrahim. Is the method applicable in the old cities as, as Jakarta, Indonesia, which has a lot of and complex problem? Uh, to Mr. Wan Abdurrahim, would you like to answer this question, please? Thank you. Um, um, uh, the question from Iman Taufi, if I can uh, just, just uh, recap back, um, he, he asking whether the solution um is applicable to jakarta right uh, so um I, i'm not so sure about the jakarta situation um, because uh, in kuala lumpur is a different context uh, however um you can look at the example that i have shared before if you feel that it's, it's may be relevant um to the communities there you you may want to apply because different area we have different needs, right? Like one, like what um, I think it Bukarina presented just now on water, right? So I think uh, that one is in Sulawesi. Uh, but I don't think uh, in Malaysia we have that similar problem. But I'm not, I'm not so sure. Maybe in in rural areas uh, which which um, involved with uh, indigenous people, right? Um, may have may face that particular situation. Uh, so depending on the context of the problem. So that's why uh, the method that I'm proposing of system methodology, we cannot assume because uh, the philosophy of that particular methodology is uh, based on uh, we need to respect and acknowledge that different community will have different needs, right? So whatever that my students are proposing, uh, the, the homeless database may not be relevant to Jakarta because you may have a different problem altogether, right? So uh, because um, based on the requirement analysis that my students have done, the problem is that um, they are repeaters, meaning to say we have given them aids, we have given them assistance, but they keep on at, at the end, they still living on streets, right? They do not want to improve themselves. So, so there is a need to do some intervention. So when we have a database, we can track them, we can tag them. So we can see the progress as, as the supports and fund is be given to them to so that they can pick up their life. However, um, a lot of uh, occurrences, uh, cases, okay? So, so looking at the context of Jakarta might be different, okay? Uh, so hopefully that answer your question. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Wan Abdurrahim, for answering the question. Uh, the next question uh, from uh, Pudrunesa Suci uh, uh, from international participant from the Fordil International University, Bangladesh. Uh, he asked to Mr. Wan Abdurrahim to. Uh, during your research, have you any dif difficulties, maybe, on compiling the data? Do you compile by yourself, your team, or collect the data from the local authority? How about the response of those people? Uh, uh, Mr. Wan Abdurrahim, would you like to answer, please? Yeah, uh, thank you for the question. I think that, that is a uh, interesting question to ask. Um, my approach, uh, since um, uh, I'm a lecturer in my university, so I have limited time to do my research. So what I did was I implement action research, meaning to say every semester, there is a group project for students to engage with community. Okay. So definitely every project will have some hassle in terms of collecting data. Um, I think the problem would be uh, my students are part-time students. So, so they need to spend like one whole day. They need to organize them, them, themselves properly. But I think the, the tips or the strategy would be to engage the right uh, people to assist. So my student, what they did was rather than to go directly to the vagrant or homeless uh, people, 
the engage these uh, so-called non-government uh, agencies to assist them and they also approach the um, local authorities so when they when you have uh, these uh, so-called um, people, uh, authorities, and those who involve directly with background, you have a lot of uh, wonderful data that they can share. Okay, so rather than you go directly, um, is 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 there? There could be one way. However, before you go and um, get the data from the uh, but um, the homeless people, might as well you rely on secondary data. Secondary data is quite rich, it's very rich because it has been prepared by the local authorities, it has been prepared by the um, non-government agencies. They are willing to share. So in terms of getting the secondary data, I think uh, my student does not face any problem. It's just that when dealing with um, background people because they are students, so they need to be very careful. They need to be aided with uh, those who are superior or those who have authority. So I would think that uh, getting secondary data is, is easy, but primary data needs a lot of ethical consideration and some guidance as well. So hopefully that answered your, your uh, question. Thank you for asking. Thank you, Mr. Wan Abdurrahim. There is uh, some question from Budur uh, He asks about to achieve the data, what type of process you use? And he asked to uh, how much will it cost minimum to achieve a uh, specific goals? Mr. Wan Abdurrahim, would you like to answer, please? Hey, uh, thank you for the question. Um, uh, it's definitely data. When doing research, you need to, to define exactly how you get the data, whether it's quantitative or qualitative, okay? Whether it's um, you, 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 you actually conduct survey. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's an action research. So uh, I do not want my students to fall the trap of getting quantitative data, getting a sample like 400, no. So um, the approach will be more on qualitative data interview. Interview uh, is, is quite straightforward. Uh, based on case study research method from Yin, uh, the number of uh, those people who you are interviewing uh, your key informant depending on the researcher. So if you get the right person, then one should would be enough. But you need to get some credential, their their profile, their, their some of the uh, information about them, them. So dealing with qualitative data is uh, quite cheap. You just gonna interview. Interview can be done um, by face to face or maybe during. Um, uh, Zoom like like this one. Yeah, we have a face to face or direct. Uh, Q and A, that one is interview can be considered as well. Email, so that one is cheap. Okay, but survey is very expensive <laughs> because um, it's a lot of um, met, uh, dealing with um, material. But interviews uh, is, is quite low, almost zero. Uh, if they reply, then it's good for you. But quantitative, since you need to get the numbers, it can be quite expensive. Uh, uh, to attract the respondent, you need to place a token, right? I think I have done before research sometimes in, when doing experiment do, using uh, quantitative data. There are cases where we need to pay like 25 ringgit Malaysia per participant to to involve with the experiment involving quantitative data, right? Uh, qualitative uh, is quite uh, yeah, straightforward, right? You just deal with a uh, very small number of people, so the number of uh, money that costing that you might want to spend is, is, is very small as compared to quantitative data, okay? So hopefully that answer your question. Thank you for asking. Thank you, Mr. Wan Abdurrahim for answering question. Uh, the next question from Winaldo Mandiri from ITS. Uh, he asks uh, for Mrs. Karin, I think, what the most important SDG for the country first. Mrs. Karin, would you like to answer, please? Yeah, I think uh, as uh, mentioned in the Nawajita Fakti, uh, President Joko Widodo is almost like a basic thing like no poverty and then a uh, hundred percent of uh, like affordable housing and also. So I think first 
uh, SCD is the most important thing in Indonesia first. And after that, maybe like uh, another achievement, uh, like uh, the sustainable city and also uh, uh, maybe that's it, Pak Sudarso. So if we are talking about priority, I think we're talking about the end, ending the poverty and providing some basic infrastructure for the people in Indonesia, yeah. Okay, thank you for the explanation, Mrs. Karen. Uh, the next question from Heru Budi Prasetyo from ITS. He asks uh, for the sanitation for the hometown or village. Is there any study for combine or mixing? How does it work, if any? Uh, Mrs. Karen. Okay, uh, I don't understand about the combined combination that uh, he proposed. Maybe Heru can explain about the little question because I don't get the question actually. Okay, Mr. Heru, maybe you can step uh, direct step, please. Mr. Heru? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Pak. Uh, I mean, about the combine or mixing is about the sanitation. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any possibility or any study that maybe you have researched before about the combination in the end of the process? And we have one solution or one, uh, I mean, so we, we, we can reduce the uh, more economic, uh, I mean like that, more more cheaper like that. So the process of the cycle is can be combined between the uh, sanitation from the hometown and also from the trash or I mean from uh, collecting sampah like that. Sampah in Indonesia. Okay. I mean. okay. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Okay, for Pak Hero, I think uh, the sanitation is, uh, we have an uh, expert uh, expert in sanitation, which is in our research center, is Pak Edot, Pak Edi Sujono, and he is also uh, finding some method, a very cheap method for the uh, sanitation, and it is already implemented in the Jombang. So, actually, if uh, you are interested about the combination of the and also previous research about it, we have a lot. You can also come to PDBM ETS, and we are going to welcome you. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you, Miss. You're welcome. Okay, thank you for Mr. Hill and Mrs. Cannon for answering. Uh, the next question from Narendra Ari Wisnu from ITS. Uh, he asks, how do you monitor homeless and make sure that its population is not growing in city scale? Uh, maybe question addressed to Mr. Wan Abdurrahim and to Mrs. Karen. Mr. Wan Abdurrahim, would you like to answer, please? Sorry, I didn't catch the question. Can you, can you repeat again? Sorry. How do you do, how do you monitor homeless and make sure that its population is not growing in city scale? Do you monitor, uh, monitor homeless? Uh, maybe. Uh, at this point of time, I know. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I catch I, I get the question. Thank you uh, for asking. Uh, uh, at this point of time, uh, uh, for my research, we do not monitor uh, because monitoring is based on authority. Um, so so basically. Um, they, they are the one who are monitoring and tracking the, the homeless, whether they have criminal activities or whether they are drug addicts. And I think in, in, in the sense of um, the, the, how do we actually make sure that the number does not increase? That one is, is beyond our reach, <laughs> right? Um, since I think, um, because as what I shared before, the, the study that we have conducted in 2018, right? That one is before COVID. Now we have COVID, a lot of people are um, struggling so um, and lose their jobs, right? So even in Malaysia, I think a lot of people are being affected very heavily. 
So we do not conduct any study yet uh, because of the restriction of the movement. So um, I think um, uh, uh, we have the assumption that the number might increase maybe double or triple, right? Because of the uh, nature of trying to survive in big city, if you are not working, if you are being laid off, right? Um, most probably you will be end, ending up in, uh, in streets, but th this is only assumption. We do not have data to, to support that uh, because we do not able to conduct our research um, yet. Uh, but I believe that the post-COVID uh, era, I think that is something that is, um, uh, it may be a surprise if the number keeps on growing and we are actually not solving the problem, okay? Because of the, um, 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 the situation where economy is really affected uh, heavily by COVID, uh, but, um, but we are praying hard. Uh, due to the vaccination process, uh, hopefully the, the economy will grow and people will start to work again, those who are being affected. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ron Abdurrahim. Maybe uh, Mrs. Karen, would you like to respond? Okay, I think the question is uh, for Prof. Ron Abdurrahim, I think. But I think about the homeless tracking is uh, the other, uh, as mentioned by Prof, is uh, conducted by the authorities. So actually, we also have a dinner social, uh, the nomenclature is a social uh, institution, and they are also tracking the homeless people. So if we are talking about the homeless people in Indonesia, I think uh, we have to communicate with the uh, dinner social, like that, Pak Sudarso. Thank you, Mrs. Karim. Okay, the question has been answered well. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think this is the time to end the webinar. Mr. Wan Abdurrahim, would you mind giving the closing statement, please? Um, uh, again, uh, thank you all for the participant. I think it's a very wonderful event. I, I learned a lot as well from the question and also from the previous speak, uh, for from uh, Bukharina as well. Uh, a lot of information being shared. So I would like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude um, and a big thank you to all. And uh, I would like to apologize if there are any shortcomings or maybe I did offend some people. I apologize in advance. And I wish all the best uh, for the organizer uh, in the next session. Okay, thank you and um, uh, best uh, best regards. Thank you, Mr. Wara Abdurrahim. Mrs. Karen, would you, mind, like, would you mind giving the closing statement? Okay, thank you very much for uh, all of the attendees and participants in here. And thank you also. I learned a lot from Prof. Abdurrahim. And thank you for the committee and also Pak Darso as a moderator. Thank you. Uh, the speaker have explained the material clearly. Uh, sustainable development goals are the development that fulfill the need of the present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs. Therefore, partnership for the goals is necessary. Government, civil society, scientists, technologies, academia, and the private sector should cooperate together to achieve sustainable development goals. In this occasion, as the moderator, I apologize if there are some mistakes during the webinar. Thank to wonderful speaker, Mr. Wan Abdurrahim Wanwoh Isa from University of Technology Mara Malaysia and Mrs. Karen Pradin Tujunan from ITS Indonesia. Thanks to all participants who follow the webinar from the beginning to the end of the session. Stay healthy and be successful to all of you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon. I will return the webinar to the MC. Thank you, Dr. Sudarsno, for this amazing session. And also, thank you very much to Associate Professor Wan Abdul Rahim and Ms. Karina for the excellent lecture today. Please give applause to our speaker and moderator by using the Zoom reaction feature.
Furthermore, we would like to present a certificate awarding to both of our speakers and also our moderator today. First is the certificate presented to Associate Professor Wan Abdul Rahim. Okay, thank you. Next is the certificate presented for Ms. Karina. Thank you very much. Last but not least, we will have the certificate presented for Dr. Sofreso as our moderator. Once again, thank you very much to our speakers and moderator for your availability today's um, guest lecture series. Now, before we end our lecture today, we invite you all participants, as well as the honorable speakers and moderator to take a group photo. To all participants, please open up your camera. We are going to wait for a few moments until uh, the participants open their camera. Okay, since uh, there's a lot of you already, uh, and there are two slides, so I will count twice. Now I will start. One, two, three. Smile. Moving on to the next slide. One, two, three. That's great. Now we have finished the group photo. And for the participants, please fill the feedback form through the link bit.ly slash feedback GLS that you can also see on the Zoom chat room. The deadline for filling the feedback is one hour after we finish this session. We want to remind you to participants who will get the stamps and the e-certificate is the participants who come on time, join this event until the end and also fill the feedback form. Finally, we have reached the end of today's guest lecture series on SDGs, and we sincerely apologize for any mistakes we may have made in presenting as Master of Ceremony and Committee. Thank you very much to Associate Professor Wan Abdul Rahim, Ms. Karina, and also Dr. Sudarso, and all participants for the attention and cooperation. We will see you in the next guest lecture lecture series on SDGs next week, as we will have one session in Tuesday, 16 March 2021, with the topic Fostering Mental Health Wellness amid the COVID-19 pandemic, and also two other sessions on Wednesday, 17 March. The first topic is Ensure Sustainable Consumption and Production Patterns and Rethink of Plastic. And for the parallel session is From Biomass to Biofuels, What's Inside? Thank you very much for your attention. Good afternoon and wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Professor Wan Abdul Rahim, uh, Miss Karina, and Dr. Sudarso, and all participants. Uh, see you on the next week, and let uh, allow me to end this session in three, two, one. Goodbye.